Right, we're up to uh, charging the third cell now. Um, I had to buy another power supply. Um, these ones can only do 5 amps and it was taking far too long uh, trickle charging these cells um, to be full. Um, so I've got two power supplies now. Um, can do a combined almost 10 amps um, and they run in a master and slave mode. Um, some interesting features on these power supplies. Um, the right hand one is the master, the left hand one uh, has this little light here, it's operating in slave mode. And the, uh, the right hand one has this um, extra cable uh, which goes to the terminals and that's a remote sensing cable. So it compensates for the voltage drop in the actual power leads. Um, the slave is showing a higher voltage. Um, that doesn't matter um, because uh, the master is controlling the overall process. So we'll stop when it gets to 3.97 volts or thereabouts. Um, and we'll control the taper charging at the moment. Both of them are in uh, constant current mode, these red lights. And when it gets to the target voltage, both of them switch to constant voltage and the current starts to come down. Um, I'm ending the charge cycle when the uh, combined current um, into the battery um, drops to 4 amps. Um, on the back of these units uh, you can see the uh, it's got some output terminals and then it's also got the uh, remote sensing terminals and then this uh, single cable which uh, provides the communication for the master to the slave. Um, they're pretty good these power supplies, they run on any voltage from uh, 100 up to 240. Um, they're power factor corrected to 0.97 and uh, pretty efficient. Don't get very warm, uh, don't have any fans in them, just uh, cooling vents on the top. Um, and that helps because I'm using uh, my old solar batteries to provide the power. Um, so all the power that's going into these cells um, will eventually get reused um, when this battery goes into service. Also in this setup I'm uh, testing out the little cell, cell log 8 cell logger that I bought. Um, you can see it here. Um, it measures the terminal voltage um, down to a millivolt accuracy um, and although you can't see it because the uh, numbers are very small um, the top number tells you uh, how, the, what the pack voltage is and then it has a upper voltage that's been reached, a lower voltage that's been reached and the delta between the two um, and it's got various various other displays um, kind of bar graph one um, again with uh, which would show you all eight cells as a as a bar graph so you could spot ones which were low um, an individual cell readout so a set of numbers one for each cell um, same again but with the pack voltage displayed um, and delta um, and back to where we were um, it will also log data to internal memory for up to um, 36 hours and um, you can set the interval uh, by default it's two seconds um, but you can slow it down if you put it to 15 seconds it'll, it'll record for a lot longer um, it has a USB port so it can send the data directly out um, to a connected PC or you can download the data later at the moment I've uh, got the USB cable plugged in but only to a a little power supply just to run the thing. Um, it can actually run off the battery pack that it's measuring um, but not it needs more than four volts so one cell isn't enough to power it up hence the five volts it gets from the USB cable. Uh, but when it's working with uh, more than two cells um, it just draws a little bit of power from the cells it's measuring 
um, and can uh, power itself up directly from the battery pack. Um, has some power saving modes. Um, it can turn off its display uh, or go to sleep after a while, um, but I'm not using those at the moment. It has a uh, alarm output, uh, open collector um, transistor output um, that will be used hopefully um, to activate um, uh, inverter um, inhibit signal so that uh, when the cell, any one cell out of the eight or the whole pack gets too low, um, the um, remote control port on the inverter will have the inhibit signal um, sent to it and the inverter will shut down, protecting the batteries from over discharge. At least that's the plan. Somewhat annoyingly, the um, cell straps that uh, I ordered with the uh, pack um, only came with the right number of bolts um, for the actual cell straps. So of course the uh, plus and minus end terminal bolts weren't included. Uh, and then I had to scour the internet for a, a UK supplier of the same stainless steel M14 20mm long bolt and washer and a lock nut. Um, as well as, of course, a, uh, a suitable M14 sized uh, terminal lug to shove the cable into. Um, these only come in massive sizes uh, that will accept a uh, 120 square millimeter cable. Um, I don't have anything that big, I don't need anything that big. Um, so I'll uh, part fill that with my 35 square millimeter cable and solder it in. Um, they're designed as uh, crimp lugs, um, but you need a, a crimp tool that uh, costs about £200 and can apply 12 tonnes of pressure to squash the thing flat. Um, so I'll just resort to um, soldering it. Uh, might work with my 100 watt soldering iron, um, or might have to resort to a blowtorch or something like in plumbing. Oh, that's an idea. I've got my uh, I've got my uh, plumber's um, 200 watt um, uh, pipe welder. That might work, um, or pipe solderer. We'll see.